I, I've always liked to travel mm -hmm. and to discover new countries. That's why also I moved to Spain and stayed uh, 13 years here. So yeah, passion for travel. Also, uh, after almost 20 years uh, working as an employee in companies, I was willing to have uh, my uh, activity and to just choose have more flexibility if you are interested in it uh, just just try um, but of course be aware of uh, it's not only the dreamy things uh, you will have some uh, some troubles some difficulties you will have to find your way of doing it i can't wait to share with you our interview with remy who is a remote worker from france so Remy really proves that you can decide to become a remote worker and figure out a work that makes it happen. So he decided he wanted to do it and he worked towards it and now he's fully remote. Another thing I really like about Remy is that he really cares for the environment and he just created a project that helped travelers be more sustainable as they go around the world. So let's dive right into the interview and learn more about him. Before we get started, we just want to give a shout out to Office R&D, who is our sponsor on today's episode. They are a co-working management software company that helps workspaces around the world deliver better experiences to their customers. They share our values of promoting and championing remote work, and they've been our biggest supporters since day one. Okay, so let's continue. So Remy, I would love it if you told me and told everyone a little, just a little bit more about yourself, like where are you from and everything. Yeah. Uh, so I'm French. Uh, I've been living the past uh, 13 years in Spain and uh, I jumped into the location independent lifestyle one year ago and freelancing as well. I was before working uh, as an employee in uh, different companies. And yeah, I'm started, uh, I started last year as a web content writer and editor in French and uh, starting now a new project aside of it. Uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's how you're able to fund this lifestyle is you, just so everyone knows, you, uh -huh. you write content yeah. for... Yeah, I write content for uh, bloggers, uh, company websites. Uh, so that's my revenue. Uh, I have to say uh, I still uh, take on my savings as well. <laughs> and uh, well, my my big uh, point on that is also to reduce my my bills, my expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, traveling slow, for example, uh, I'm not having a base anymore. So I'm not renting a house that I don't use uh, part of the time. I'm just uh, renting where I am at a certain moment. So yeah, reducing the, the expenses and trying to uh, make him grow my, my activity. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So what, what initially motivated you to start in this lifestyle? Like how did you hear about it and what motivated you to just get on the plane? Well, um, I would say get on the train more than get on the <laughs> plane. <laughs> but I will explain that maybe later. Okay. Uh, um, I, I've always liked to travel mm -hmm. and to discover new countries. That's why also I moved to Spain and stayed uh, 13 years here. Mm -hmm. uh, I took sabbatical years to just to travel. Then a second one uh, to try uh, to, to start the digital nomad life. Uh, got to, I, I got to interrupt because of health problem, but uh, when when it was okay again i i jumped into it again for for real at <laughs> that time mm -hmm. uh, so yeah passion for travel also uh, after almost 20 years uh, working as an employee in companies i was willing to have uh, my uh, activity and to just choose have more flexibility, uh, be able to choose uh, what to do uh, with which clients, we, uh, and the rhythm of work, etc. Mm. That's cool. So for people who are thinking of doing this lifestyle, working remotely and everything, one thing I'd like to share is the real stuff. So mm -hmm. 
we all love traveling. You said you've, you've been doing this for over a year now, right? Yeah. Traveling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you've stayed at, you said, four different co-living spaces? Yeah, four different ones, yeah. Nice. And now yeah. you're kind of starting back over. It's your second yeah, time at Yeah, repeating more or less. Yes. Uh, yeah. And trying some new places and everything. But mm -hmm. what are some obstacles that you faced along the way or while you're traveling that, that are the, the real moments? Uh -huh. Uh, well, first, it's when I when I started last year, I was very excited and uh, and yeah, willing to visit new places. I heard about some cool co-living place uh, spaces and communities. Uh, I had also uh, the intention to visit some friends that I haven't seen for many times, etc. So that's a lot of uh, choices that mm -hmm. are suddenly. Uh, possible <laughs> but at the same time uh, you have to choose you can't be <laughs> everywhere at the same time yeah. especially if for some reason uh, ecological reason that's why I use train for example or financial reason uh, I made the choice to travel slow so that reduce the possibilities of uh, places and people that you can meet in the year um, so yeah that's first this choice between family and friends, uh, a place or another, mm -hmm. uh, that's the first uh, difficulty. And um, yeah, the other one is, um, uh, I would say to, um, how to say, <laughs> Uh, no, let's let's say that that's the main one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know you're super close with your family. You've told me that, right? Yeah. So just, there is just the element of I could be home, you know, near near my family. Yeah. Yes. True. Uh, yeah. My my family, uh, I, I think, gave me the the travel bug mm. uh, because they uh, they always uh, hosted people or traveled themselves. That's cool. And um, yeah, I'm kind of repeating that model, but uh, doing it. Uh, with more liberty uh, mm -hmm. through um, this uh, location independent lifestyle and uh, my freelancing ac activities. That's cool. I love that. You were saying that your parents have always been travelers and they always bring friends home yeah. and they always yeah. make these friends on the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I can see that in <laughs> uh -huh. you as well. Oh, thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> one thing I was saying about you is that I don't think um, a lot of people when they go into like co-living spaces or shared spaces, a lot of people want to be hosted. They, uh -huh. They're like, what do I get out of this? Like, uh -huh. this is my thing. And you're always like helping. He's always giving, yeah. always wanting to connect people, help clean up things, and make sure everyone feels comfortable. And well, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't take it uh, as a charge. It's just, uh, yeah, something natural. And yeah, when you are sharing a space with, with people, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's just natural to, to be here, to help, to share the tasks, and not only the fun uh, moments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I think that's the magic of you, is uh -huh. that that adds to the community and is the foundation of it. So Thank whether you. you realize it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So one last thing, is there anything that you would say to people who are maybe in your shoes back home and they're thinking of traveling and working remotely, mm -hmm. is there anything that you would want to say to them? Well, I, I would say if, if, you, if you are interested in it, uh, just, just try. Um, but of course, be aware of uh, it's not only the dreamy things. Uh, you will have some, uh, some troubles, some difficulties, you will have to find your way of doing it. Some people are doing it fast, some others slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some kind of uh, places or uh, in terms of uh, countries or cities or, or, or more remote towns that are more for you. There are some co-livings that are more for you than others. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you prefer to be in Airbnb and stuff. So just try and just see, see what's, what's for you. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and also uh, on the financial way, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I don't think it's um, cost uh, much more than uh, than the normal way of life, uh, uh, having a, how, a home uh, in a city, etc. Mm -hmm. But it's just different so you have to learn to manage this uh, financial side yeah. as well i think if you if a person does it in a certain way it can actually be cheaper than some of the places they're living yeah, back home yeah, but like yeah, you're exactly. saying yeah you have to be smart about it yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think because yeah, you have to reduce finally all your your um, uh, material things uh, that you carry with you. Uh, I, I recognize that I have some stuff uh, stored at my parents' home, but uh, but yeah, I've sold many many things. Uh, I don't buy many things because I have to carry them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's also force you to be uh, more uh, um, sustainable in terms of economy and ecology as well. That's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much for me. Thank you, Brittany. I think this will definitely help people. And also, I just I find you very inspiring, even if you don't realize it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hope so. Then <laughs> that that you can help. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think uh -huh. it will. Thank you. Thank you. That was such a great interview. Remy proves that you can travel slow, care about your environment, and also be family focused, even as a full-time remote worker. I can't wait to see his project grow, and I'll put the link for it in the comments below. If you liked the episode, hit like at the bottom of the screen, subscribe to our channel, and we cannot wait to see you next time. Bye guys.